Okay, so we're going to be looking at this uh, shaft here, 20 millimeter diameter, 300 millimeters long. Uh, there's bearings at each end that support it, but still allow a bit of rotation. Uh, so kind of a simple support type uh, type deal going on here. Uh, and then it's got uh, each of them, uh, it's got uh, two identical gears uh, on them uh, with uh, that are one kilogram in mass. Uh, kind of equally positioned. So, 100 bearing, 100 millimeters, g uh, gear, 100 millimeters, gear, 100 millimeters, other bearing. And we want to find the critical speed. So, first thing we want to do is basically how, find out how much uh, displacement the gears are going to have based upon their own, based upon the weight applied to the shaft alone. So basically, uh, you know, this can be treated as a simply supported beam, um, which means, and it's a, you know, simply supported beam with a relatively uh, sta you know, uniform uh, weight arrangement, when we, which means that uh, I could either go ahead and uh, try to calculate the displacement uh, uh, myself, or I could just go and use the formula that someone else already did. So went to engineeringtoolbox.com's beam supported at both ends page. Uh, and then they've got, uh, you know, uh, they've already solved for what uh, two eccentric loads will cause for the deflection at the points of load application. So this is important. You need, you know, the, the deflection needs to be at the point of the load application here. Uh, it's the deflection of the gears the, the weights there that, that matters. Uh, so that deflection that they solve for is you know, delta is equal to F times the A, where A is the distance between, uh, A is, uh, A is that distance there, that distance there and there, even on both sides, <coughs> times three, three L squared minus four A squared and divided by 24 EI. So our I in this case, pi over four times R to the fourth, uh, as per usual for a circular shaft. Uh, so pi over four times uh, 10 millimeters to the fourth gives us uh, 7,854 millimeters to the fourth. Our E, uh, which I got from uh, NX uh, C1 of juveniles, uh, Three, uh, 700, sorry, 207 uh, gigapascals. Again, uh, 207, if you if you use the 200, that uh, number that was often thrown about, uh, 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 you often see it thrown about as well, that, that works as well. Uh, I think that was uh, based upon, you know, the, that was the standard value that was uh, used in the text, you know, uh, used in the tables from the year 331 course, so that works as well. Uh, f the force there is obviously, uh, in this case, would be the weight of the gears. So the weight of those gears, one kilogram times G, 9.81 meters per second squared, gives us 9.81 newtons. And then just plug that in there. So 9.81 newtons times, times your 100 millimeters times three times 300 millimeters squared minus four times 100 millimeters squared divided by 24 times 37, 7,854 millimeters to the fourth times, uh, again, I, I took, took my gigapascals, converted it to megapascals, so seven, seven, 207 times 10 to the three megapascals and then just put mega instead of megapascals I put newtons per millimeter squared so that everything else cancelled out nicely so you know the millimeter these two millimeters cancelled out with two two of those millimeters there <coughs> and then we got millimeters to the third on the top and then millimeters uh, to, to, uh, to the second on the bottom after these newtons cancel out so the units we end up with are uh, in millimeters. So that ends up being uh, 
5.78 times 10 to the negative 3 millimeters, and then I converted that to meters uh, by dividing by a thousand again, and you know, uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, you'll see why in a bit. So we got that, uh, and of course, you know, based upon the fact that everything's symmetrical there, uh, we could expect the same deflection at both of those points. So I don't need to kind of recalculate there, thankfully. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to have a certain amount of displacement due to sagging of the shaft itself. Uh, so that's going to be based upon its weight. Uh, so the density of steel of the steel, uh, which again I got from uh, NX C1 of uh, of uh, juveniles. That's uh, going to be 7.7 .7 megagrams per meter squared, which again I just converted to 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms per millimeter squared. So the total weight of the shaft is just the volume times the density times gravity. Uh, so you know, find out find out what the volume is. Multiply by the density to get your mass. Multiply by g to get your weight. So those things com combined means that uh, the weight of this of uh, that uh, twenty millimeter diameter shaft is just going to be uh, seven point one two newtons. So and that's if we're treating this as a distributed load, that's going to be over a 300 millimeter span, which means that uh, we're looking at 0 0.0237 newtons per millimeter. So that's going to cause a certain amount of sagging of the shaft itself. Again, I've uh, got the formula here for the displace. Oh, got the formula here for the displacement of Kind of the maximum displacement uh, in the central in the for, uh, caused by distributed load. I, I think that one is I, I took from the Pytel's uh, uh, Pytel's uh, formula. Uh, uh, the for, yeah from the from formula sheet that was distributed uh, last semester, uh, but uh, again plenty of places you could find that same formula. So uh, again, five times the distributed load times the length to the fourth divided by 384 EI. So I'll plug in the values there and we end up getting in meters 1.54 times 10 to the uh, negative six meters. So uh, we got those displacements. Now we can kind of figure out what sort of, uh, oh, what am I trying to say here? What sort of uh, critical speed kind of we get uh, based upon those kind of two scenarios. So we got, basically we got the, we got two scenarios. We got the multiple masses one, and we've got the, uh, oh, what do you call it? And you know, we've got the shaft itself one. So we kind of just calculate those separately and then figure out uh, kind of how they combine. So the multiple, the, the, the critical speed based upon the multiple masses neglecting the effect of the shaft itself, again, is just the critical speed is equal to 30 over pi times g times the sum of the displacement at each of the weights times the weight of that weight, and then adding all those up for each weight, keeping in mind, of course, that the, you know, that d1 needs to be a function of uh, the displacement caused by the combined effect of all the weights that you add on there. So that d1 is, that d1 is going to be the displacement at this location, but it's going to be the displacement at 
at this location that's caused by the weights of both of those gears. But again, that's why that's why I use this formula. And that's why I use this formula here because yeah, that already took in took both weights into account there. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, some of those yeah you know, D one sorry delta one uh, W one plus delta two W two all divided by the sum of uh, uh, W one delta one squared plus W two delta two squared. So we can go ahead and kind of plug that in here. So 30 over pi times the square root of 9.81 meters per second squared times 9.81 newtons times the 5.78 times 10 to the negative six meters plus 9.81 newtons times, this is the same value repeated because the weights are the same and the displacement's the same for those two two values. And then just on the bottom there, again, it's just kind of the same thing, but the uh, uh, but the uh, but squaring the displacement term. So basically what we're saying here is uh, this term here resolves to basically two times the weight, two times the weight times the displacement that was calculated. And this term here ends up being uh, two times the weight times the displacement squared. So basically everything cancels out to being just 30 pi times the square root of g divided by the displacement in meters. So the reason I did it in meters is so that you know, our units cancel out nicely here because we've got the meters on the top uh, in our g term. And then we're left with per second. And then this one here, the 30 over pi, yeah, yeah I, so that was, we're, we're, we're stealing this formula from the textbook. Realistically, what, what we, you know, uh, the 30 pi is not, is, is actually a conversion factor that takes um, uh, our natural frequency and converts it to a critical speed in RPM. So realistically, uh, just this term here that gives us our critical speed, our, our critical speed in uh uh, per se, you know, uh, rotations per second. I'm oh, sorry, radians per second. And then we multiply it by this conversion factor here, which is really a, a ratio of uh, RPMs per ro radians per second. So that ends up being uh, 12,400 RPM, you know, give or take. I rounded it to rounded it to the nearest hundred. And then for just the shaft, we had the formula that was the other formula here. Basically, main difference there is that uh, five over four term. Uh, and it's just kind of accounting for the fact the weights are kind of evenly distributed uh, uh, along the length of the shaft. So it's it's going to have less of you know, the the fact that the weights are evenly distributed along the length of the shaft means that it's going to have kind of a bit less of an effect than if it was a concentrated point load. Uh, so you're not going to kind of get get reach the critical speed as quickly. Uh, so you're going to end up having a, a slightly higher uh, critical speed calculated. But anyways, uh, yeah, so we just uh, punch everything in here again. Oh, I forgot to throw my meters down there. Punch everything in there. And then, you know, meters cancel out, per seconds cancel out, so on and so forth. And that ends up giving us a uh, 26,900 RPM. 
uh, for if it was just the shaft that was uh, causing uh, uh, that was spinning on its own without those two weights. And we can just use uh, Dunkerque's equation to combine those two. So 1 over the critical speed squared is equal to 1 over the critical speed caused by the shaft squared. Oh, one of my squares didn't show up uh, show up on the scan very well there, but uh, at the, you can kind of see where it's supposed to be, but that's, uh, there's a squared there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, anyways, 1 plus 1 over the critical speed squared uh, is equal to 1 over the critical speed caused by the shaft alone squared plus 1 over the critical speed caused by the gears alone squared. Now, uh, punch everything together, solve for NC, do a bit of algebra, and we end up getting a val we end up getting a critical speed value for the shaft system as a, uh, the combined uh, systems of the shaft itself and the gears itself of 11,260 RPM. So certainly, uh, certainly the fact that the gear, you know, the gears are driving that to a large degree. Uh, you know, they're they're the they, they had the largest effect. Uh, so they're going to be dr shifting the um, yeah, the, the, yeah. They they had the largest effect, so that they're going to be primarily responsible for setting the critical speed. But the shaft, the inclusion of the shaft, does drive it down a little bit more than it would have otherwise done. So, so uh, basically, uh, unless yeah, you should. It's it's generally good practice to uh, include the effect of the uh, of just the shaft itself sh uh, sagging as well in your calculations. Uh, you know, it, it's not exactly an onerous calculation, so you can uh, you, you can you can incorporate it into your workflow relatively simply. And yeah, that's uh, that's how you do that.